Welcome back for part two of my Spectrum Mod Magic Update walkthrough. Now, before we get started, I need to make a quick addendum to the last episode. I need to give a little bit of uh, additional background for the shooting stars. According to the developer, you have a 1% chance per tick for 100 ticks every night for a shooting star to spawn. It has to be clear or starry night. And if you're using a night vision potion and you're holding an hourglass just by holding it, you don't have to be using the hourglass. You just need to be holding the hourglass. This is roughly 10% chance per night. But with this combination of items, you can more than double your spawn chances. The developer says this is roughly 40%. So with this combination of things, you can have four star falls per night for every player who has unlocked the shooting star section in Spectrum. The colors are random, though. There's no way to force one color after another. So with that being said, let's get on to the next bit. We'll pick up right where we left off by murdering Enderman. Now, as you're traveling around your world, uh, you will see Endermen, like we all do. Now, Endermen are known to pick up blocks. Dirt, sand, clay, and that's really about it. However, if you see an Enderman... Ah, there's one. If you see an Enderman, during cobble, take note and kill it. And we're just going to do a mass kill. Now that looks like cobble. But it is not. These blocks are kind of cool because what they allow you to do is make ender hoppers and ender droppers. And they basically will pull anything to or from your ender chest, regardless of where you are in the world, as long as you are logged in. You can also make ender glass, which are, you know, see through and so on and so forth. So um, they're they're pretty snazzy. I like them. It took me a little bit to figure out um, how to make this spawn because on the older version, these things uh, just started randomly appearing everywhere. And now you have to wait for one to spawn that's carrying a block that Enderman shouldn't carry. One of the things I forgot to mention, Ender Glass has got a very unique property to it. If you apply a redstone signal to it, it becomes transparent, which is kind of fascinating. I don't know what use this has right now, but it's something that is interesting. I think there's a way you can actually, like, walk through the glass. Oh, there it is. You can walk through the glass, but you have to probably walk through it. I don't know. Maybe there's a specific signal strength that needs to be. I don't quite understand this one just yet, but it is something you can do, and it's something that needed to be noted. Oh, yes, structure upgrades. We didn't talk about this. Structure upgrades are actually really kind of nice. Uh, most of the structures have these accelerators that you can actually put on these pedestals right here that will speed up the crafting process. So there's a few that take a really long time, and by throwing the accelerators on them, it cuts that time almost in half, sometimes a little bit more, I think. And the book shows you where to put the different upgrades. Now out in the ocean, if you start floating around, you might actually find these earlier, depending. You'll run into something called a mermaid's gem. And these are very useful for a lot of different things, including alchemy. There is a full-blown alchemy station, which is a little bit different from vanilla with its own recipes. And night vision goggles, and they're, they're, it's, they're kind of a cool little detail. Now, if you go to the bottom of the ocean, there is a, a mermaid's brush. And the mermaid's gems come from a mermaid's brush. They only survive in water, so if you want one of these nearby, you can just go over and just kind of just drop it and as it uh, grows it'll spit the gem up so you can set up an auto collection system if you need to the other thing that has unlocked at this point is a new ore in the nether it's called stratine ore and you can get fragments and gems out of it now one of the things you can make and this is really kind of cool it's something called semi-permeable glass it takes some pigment some glass and a shard and some powder of various colors and you put it in the crafting ta table behind us and what that does is something very interesting it allows you to walk through it but mobs cannot so if we take some blue glass here and we put it around this temple see we can walk through this but if i was to put a zombie on the other side of this glass he would come up and get stuck stuck right there he would not be able to walk through which is really kind of cool. This is one of the many, like, 
nifty details that they've added. Now that we have unlocked both the Stratine and the Onyx, we can now make something called a Bottle of Failing. And this is Hungry. It's one of the two things that is extremely dangerous in this mod, and you do not want to leave it unattended. And I'm, I'm going to give you a slight example as to why. So we're going to go over here. But we're going to take this Bottle of Failing. I'm going to drop it right there. I like the sound. This is nice, deep, rum. And we're we're gonna we're gonna come back in a bit. Oh, see that it's already spreading. And we're just gonna like you know, drop one here. You know, maybe one here, and we'll put one right there. Put that on top of it. No big deal. No one, no one will even know it's even there. I kid, of course. Um, this stuff is actually very dangerous, and it does eat through things a lot like the the fading does. But what this wants specifically is obsidian. If you put the obsidian on top of it, it will convert the obsidian. There it is. To get something we can't see yet. And as with the quirkiness of this mod, there's a few things you still have to craft, even though I can pull them out of creative. This apparently is one of them. Now that thing I picked up that I couldn't see before is now a neolith. So we'll need quite a few of these to progress. There's a few more things we actually need to take care of. The next one is actually a new ore that it buries underground in deep slate levels. I have uh, added world edit to the install because I think it's easier just to demonstrate this stuff like this. So we're going to take a huge chunk and we're just going to completely wipe out all the stone in deep slate. And now here we have a great big hole to bedrock. I stopped at deep slate, but I cleared everything else out. To show you there, there's been a slight change in ore generation, even from the live stream that I did uh, a few weeks ago. It used to be that shimmerstone ore specifically like to generate in the corners of chunks, uh, just a block or two here, all the way down. You can find them about every 10 layers. And now it looks like they have changed that generation here, and it is now in the very center. And it looks like if you find one bit of it, you're going to find quite a bit of it all right together. This is very handy. And I like this a lot better. The idea of going down a corner of a chunk and always finding something was great, but it was very widely dispersed in trying to find something else. So if you dig at not quite straight down, but straight down-ish, you will find a fair amount in a small cluster. Now if we go here down below Deep Slate, now with the Deep Slate, Lava, and Tuff removed, we can see the ores have opened up a little bit more. And again, we're seeing... The, the shimmering stone, oh, oh, interesting. That is very fascinating. So it looks like the ore generation changed for above deep slate levels, but below deep slate levels, it still kind of wants to generate on the very edge of chunks, which is fascinating. Let's see if it did. Okay, it's not every corner like it was before, but at least on some corners, it looks like it still is. That's still good to know, though, that that is how that generates. And again, these are a lot closer together than they were before uh, in the earlier versions of 1.5. So uh, to me, this is a welcome change. Now, down here, a little bit further, starting at about, oh, there's our first piece right there. Where are we? Negative 41. That is the next ore we're looking for. It is called Azurite. This opens up a whole bunch of new options inside of the mod, some of which were not available when I first did this. And there's a very good reason why I took this all the way to bedrock, and you'll see what that is here in a short bit. And since we're talking about ore generation, I came to the nether and world edited out a whole chunk of terrain, and I found something very interesting. The Stratine still loads in, in huge chunks and veins like it, the rest of the ores do. The fascinating thing is that they seem to have a higher chance to generate the closer to a fortress you are. Because as I get over further away from it, then it doesn't really show up anymore. The other thing that's fascinating about this particular ore is I thought originally that this was down in netherite levels at 15 or so, but now it's generating a, a between 35 and 52. So find yourself a fortress and uh, in another waste and start digging and you'll, you'll probably have some pretty good luck with this. However, before we get to the bedrock bit, uh, we need to talk about something that was included in the last update. 
I just skipped it in the how-to because I didn't understand how it worked. And that is the potion workshop. Now, you would use this like you would use a brewing stand. There's a small difference. So the difference is, is instead of running off of blaze powder... Just a sec. You would use this in the same way you would use a brewing stand. The only difference is this runs off of mermaid gems. If you come into the magical block section of the book over here, and you'll find there's these three categories. Now, what's not terribly clear, at least it wasn't to me, is that in order for this to actually fully unlock, you actually have to brew a standard vanilla potion first. And it's not done in the way you think it is. So this still uses mermaid gems for just about everything, but you have to have both another wart and we're going to do uh, a weakness potion, a fermented spider eye. But this doesn't take bottles of water. It takes empty bottles. So additional reagents go in here to alter this potion. There. Now this is fully unlocked. So did you notice it makes three at a time, which is fantastic. So we're going to grab glowstone dust, gunpowder, and we're just going to shift click those right into place. And some redstone dust. And now we have a 4 minute and 30 second weakness potion. I'm not sure why these aren't converting into a splash, because I thought they should, but they're not. This is one of those pieces of this mod that I still find um, a little bit confusing. I understand how it works in base concept, and I like the implementation of it, but there's certain aspects of it, such as, how come this isn't splash? Why didn't that reagent double or triple the length of something? But I just don't quite get, at least for vanilla recipes. If you're going to use this for anything, just use it for Spectrum recipes. It's nice to be able to mass produce vanilla recipes like this. But for whatever reason, I personally don't understand why it's not doing what I think it should. If someone, if someone understands why, please leave me a comment and I'll update this tutorial. The next thing on the list is to make some liquid crystal. And the recipe is as follows. With two pink pigment, a mermaid gem, yellow pigment, shimmering stone, and a bucket and one of each type of powder. Once you have the bucket, put it down, stand in it, pick it back up. And with that progress, we can now make the Spectrum Enchanting Table. It shows up in the book as such. And as usual, it has its own shrine. And there is the completed enchanting structure. A spectrum enchanting is a little bit different from normal enchanting is the fact that not only are there a few different and new enchantments, you can make enchanting books, upgrade enchanting books, and duplicate enchanting books. But in order to do this, it requires something called a knowledge gem, which the recipe for this is underneath magical items. And this is the recipe. The knowledge gem is very unique because the way it works is you shift right click to add XP and you center right click to pull XP out. As it sits, the gems are about 5 to 1 for experience in and out, and they're not very efficient and not very quick. However, if you make two of these and enchant them, it actually speeds them up and makes them 1 to 1. Right clicked the, the gem and put it on the table, and I got a whole bunch of recipes. And you can see there's standard Minecraft enchantments in there, and spectrum specific enchants in there. Now you can double the speed and the efficiency of the knowledge gems by putting two gems in the altar and putting an efficiency or quick charge book in the item bowl. It's important to note that you have to have sufficient XP in the two gems for this to work. There it is. Now we have an enchanted knowledge gem that stores twice as much or ten times as much and it's guaranteed a one for one. Now with enchanting unlocked, this is where the second half of this mod really opens up because what we needed more than the enchanting was the liquid crystal as it's kind of important for almost everything else here on forward. In the next step of this journey, we're going to do something called Midnight Aberration and it requires back here to be at the Fusion Shrine. We're going to put the liquid crystal in the pedestal, then Topaz, Amethyst, Neolith, Onyx Shard. This particular, like, bell summoning recipe, I'm not sure what to call it, has to take place on a clear sky in the middle of a sunny day, so it's perfect right now.
As it is with everything inside of a spectrum, this stuff is particularly deadly and hurtful. It will just kind of inhale and chew through everything like everything else does. But this stuff is a little bit different because it is actually a liquid. And it's not as easy to get rid of as you might think. Sure, you could put down blocks and actually stop the flow of it. But the thing is, you actually want this stuff actually from the ground as it destroys it. The chips you get from enemies that are walking in it and the solution buckets will thus just a black gunk you pick up with a bucket. And you'll need this for other recipes down the line. As case in point, we're going to let this poor little llama die. Oh, look, the wandering trader died here too. And I got a chip out of it. So you actually have to pick this stuff up and murderize mobs with it in order to get the things out of it you need to progress. Which is irritating, but effective underneath like a mob spawner. We get plenty of it that way. Unfortunately, I actually had a, a small, a little bit of file corruption and I lost quite a bit of footage. But the next thing that I do have is that we have to make a bottle of ruin. Which is this right here. It's why you needed the midnight chips. You know what? Let's make a total mess of the world. And let's put it right here. I love that sound. But this is actually one of the reasons why I exposed bedrock. Is what this one's deep is the bedrock. Now granted, this is like the fading or the failing or even the midnight aberration stuff. It'll consume everything. But there's a specific thing you want to feed it. In this case, it's the bedrock. And see, it doesn't take long to convert either. When the texture changes like this, you can actually mine it in survival with a pick. Now, you can't actually open a hole to the void in the overworld. I don't know if it'll actually eat through the nether roof ceiling. I've never tried. What you get out of this is bedrock dust. Now, this is actually used for weapons and armor and other couple of other recipes. To my knowledge, there's only one thing you can do with this. You make weapons and armor out of it. Because of course you do. I mean, what else would you realistically use it for? Well, if curiosity killed the cat, it just murdered me. But it does mean you can use this to rip a hole in your nether ceiling. So that makes it a lot easier. If you have not already done so, now is the time to make a black sapling for black dye and black pigment, which you're going to need to make the rest of the armor. Each recipe is a little bit different, but they'll require a gold piece of armor Bedrock, onyx powder, and stratine fragments. Some of them require gems, but they all require that evil midnight solution that we made earlier. So in order to progress, we're going to quickly pop these up. And with that, we have a full set of bedrock armor. I like it. It's really snazzy. The model's nice. Honestly, not going to lie, it reminds me a little bit of um, one of the seasons or whatever, World of Warcraft for the Paladin, which was my favorite class to play, by the way. So I'm down. I like this. This is nice. But this is where we're going to end this recording. Uh, if we look, there's still quite a bit left here that we haven't touched yet. But here's the edge of what isn't developed. And there's only really one or two things here that are worth noting that you won't just kind of do on your own anyway if you want to seek them out. This is the stuff that progression-wise really matters, especially this line right here. And we'll get to that in the next episode. So thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this, if this has been helpful, please click like and subscribe, comment down below. It helps with interactions. I really appreciate you being here and I will see you in the next one. See you soon.